in for the left side. And Jude is a flyer. Rambush to Good at the two. And Good is knocked down as he crosses the 20 near the 21 yard line. A 20 yard return. Tackle made by Mike O'Toole, and here comes the senior quarterback, David Smith. He will be joined offensively for the Crimson Tide by Murray Hill and Robert Stewart in the backfield. Greg Payne and Marco Battle, not the quickest wide receivers. Howard Cross, who's improved as a receiver terrifically in the last season, is tight end. David Smith, 61%, and seven touchdowns to go with seven interceptions in 88. Missed three games early in the year. The toss to Murray Hill. And he's knocked down as he gets near the 23-yard line. As we highlight the secondary first of the cadets of West Point, Mike Thorson and Ernest Boyd are the cornerbacks. Daryl Sherb and O'Neal Miller. Oh, Miller might be the, the toughest hitter defensively on the team. And Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator from Alabama, said about O'Neal Miller, we have to account for him. He makes a lot of plays at free safety. We always have to block him. Second down and eight, back split play fake. David Smith, the lefty, throws it out incomplete, intended for Greg Payne, number six, and it'll be third and eight. Payne comes back in. David Smith, of course, wants a walk-on at Alabama and might be playing his final year today. Homer, Homer Smith says a lot of folks don't think he's a great quarterback. We think he's a very good quarterback. Everybody underestimates him, but I have seen him three times this year, and he has played remarkably well. A very heady player makes a lot of smart plays. Third and eight. Stunts by the Army defensive line. A short pass taken by Murray Hill. And he's got the first down plus as he cuts across the 40 and is knocked down at the 43. This, kind of, this play here, this short pass to Murray Hill, kind of characterizes this Alabama offense and Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator's philosophy. You get back and you dink the ball. You throw short passes to guys like Murray Hill, who are so good after they catch the ball and make a lot of people miss, they turn a five-yard gain into a 15-yard gain. That one was 19 and a first and 10 Alabama. They trail 7-0. High formation, both wide receivers left, left and a toss to Murray Hill. He comes to the short side of the field. And is out of bounds at the 45-yard line. Pat Davey, number 66. You know, Vern, we talked about the weight differential between this big Alabama offensive line and this Army defense. And what Army has to do to try to combat that is move people around. They're a slanting defense, which Alabama does not see much in the Southeastern Conference. So you're going to see a lot of people moving late and slanting and trying to confuse David Smith just a little bit. Kevin Turner comes in now at fullback on second down at seven for the Crimson Tide. He's the short man of the eye. Wide receivers left and right. And Smith will throw. Cox and fires deep. And it is caught by Marco Battle. That's another Alabama first down as they cross midfield for the first time. You know, Vern, there's a lot of guys in college football like Marco Battle, who guys who are not the fastest guys on their team or in their neighborhoods, but who get it done without speed because the game just seems to care more to guys like that. They've had to work harder their whole lives, and he's done a remarkable job this year at Alabama. Battle came into this game with 28 catches in the regular season. First down and 10, Battle. The handoff, Murray Hill. Nice move behind the line. It's Pierre Good, rather. Good, who has been operating as a flanker all year long, has been moved back to his original spot at tailback for the first time in this game. Here's, again, that big offensive line trying to clear the way for Pierre Good. The right tackle, Chapman, leads the way. But, again, quick penetration by the Black Knights, who have three or four black jerseys around Good before he had any chance to make his move and use that speed that he has. David Castile in as a running back now. Second down and nine. Seven nothing, Army leads. Three man rush by the cadets. Smith with time, deep left side and overthrows. His intended receiver, Todd Richardson, number 23. One of the things early on that this uh, Black Knight defense is doing is really disrupting, I think, the rhythm of David Smith. Ordinarily, David throws a lot of catchable balls right in the numbers, but so far, because he's had a little pressure on him early in this game, he is not kind of throwing the balls that have been easy to catch. Third and nine for Alabama, trailing 7-0 with 10-10 to go, first quarter. 
Last time on third and long, Smith found Murray Hill for the first down in a 19-yard game. Straight drop back across the middle, incomplete. Intended for Lamont Russell, the backup tight end, who had come in on passing downs. And that will bring on Chris Moore as the Crimson Tide have the drive stymied and will be forced to punt. Wind is not a factor today at all. It's a, a gentle breeze of five miles an hour. There's Chris Moore, all-time leading punter in Alabama history. Average 45-1 back as a freshman and has had a terrific uh, career. Paul Wind will return with a moderate average of 4.7 and timeout has been called now by Alabama. There's a bit of the Christmas flavor from the southwestern part of the United States as we're on the Mexican border in El Paso. Back in a moment. The cadets out on top, 7 nothing. A 70-yard drive. They came in as 14 underdogs. I am a little surprised. Old game is in. Narrowly, that that punt is on grass. That doesn't happen. Right now, let's go back down to John Dockery. You know, Vern, after that first Army drive, there was shock and bewilderment along the Alabama sideline. Defensive coach Larry New took his chargers and told them to keep their poise, keep their cool, and emphasize to Derek Thomas that he has to be tougher at the point of attack. We'll see what happens in this series. Now back to you, Vern. All right, John. Cadets have a first down and 10 at the 20. This is an Army team averaging 346 yards on the ground per game. Back Williams to Mayweather. And they get around the corner again. And Vern, that was a perfect example of optioning off Derek Thomas. You attack the best man on their defense, but you don't block him. You come down the line of scrimmage. He was there. They pitched right off him and had a nice little game. Watch it. You'll see Derek Thomas on the right part of the screen step up, number 55, and he's the man he's optioned off. Of. Nobody even blocked him. You don't have to in the option play, and that's why it suits this uh, Army team so well. Second down and four. This time they'll test the middle of the line, and that might be enough to move the chain again. Keith McCants, number 86, makes the tackle. This is the first time Alabama, of course, has faced a wishbone team this year. Ironic, because they used to run it. How difficult is it to face a wishbone team for the first time? Well, it is very difficult, particularly when you have the kind of defense that Alabama has, which is a pressure, aggressive defense. And when you play a wishbone, you have to stay at home and be much more disciplined, although they had a couple of weeks to prepare for the game. First down at 10 Army. Mac Williams will keep it this time around the corner. I'm reminded of something that Don Lindsay, the defensive coordinator at Alabama, said yesterday to us. If we can get them in second and seven, then we've done a good job. They haven't done that, has Derek Thomas. And we talked, John Doc, we just talked about uh, Derek Thomas at the point of attack. That time they did block him, and they blocked him just long enough to allow the ball carrier to get around him. So Derek Thomas has seen sometimes where he's not getting blocked at all, and other times the lead back is coming right into his shoulder pass. Jim Young, the Army coach, and second down and four. Mayweather again. And it will be third and one as Mayweather clutches near the 40-yard line. Charles Gardner makes the tackle, number three. What a gorgeous Christmas Eve in El Paso, Texas. Here for the John Hancock Sun Bowl. They don't have a sellout, but a very good crowd on hand here at the southern tip of the Rocky Mountains where the University of Texas El Paso plays its home games. Army leads at 7 0, a one yard run by Mike Mayweather at the end of a 70 yard drive, the highlight of which was a 52 yard run by the fullback, Ben Barnett. Third and one. Mac Williams. And that's another Army first down. And their whole philosophy is chew up the clock, go for first downs, long sustained drives. Jim, uh, Jim Young said the faster the game is played, the better chance we have of winning. And it's going exactly according to his plan, uh, plan right now. They are turning out those first downs, and they got the score, of course, on their first drive, and they're getting themselves into third and ones and twos, and that's how wishbone teams win ball games. This is the second drive, and Army has now equaled the average number of yards that Alabama gives up per game. Fumble! And that is something that Army does not do. They've only lost seven this year. Derek Thomas makes the tackle on McWilliams. And this, uh, we talked about the offensive line being so small, and they are. And they are runner at the center right there, only 240 pounds. But it's an offensive line. When you run the wishbone, again, you don't have to dominate the guys in front of you. You have to be a finesse kind of blockers. You have to be able to get downfield and block safeties. And the two tackles from Army in particular do a beautiful job of doing that. Second down to 10. First, second and long in a game for Army. Mayweather 
And now here's where Army is at a disadvantage. They've got a third and seven coming up as Willie Wyatt, number 98, makes the tackle. Defensively, there's Willie Wyatt. The nose tackle. And he's joined by Tommy Cole and George Bethune, numbers 51 and 59. Third down and six. And the cadets average only 47 yards passing per game. Nice job by Charles Gordon defensively to allow Derek Thomas to come up and make the tackle as Gordon took away the pitch. And that is the key. When Gordon takes away the pitch, the quarterback has nowhere to go, and Derek Thomas played through a couple of blocks. You see, he doesn't stay blocked. That's the one thing you like about Derek Thomas. Even when he goes down, he doesn't stay blocked for very long. He gets up and makes the play. That brings on Biff Rambush for the first punt for Army, and Murray Hill, number 45, is back to return. Bear catch called by Murray Hill at the 15 as he peers into the sun on Christmas Eve morning. That's a 38-yard punt for Rambush. Alabama has the ball back, trailing 7-0. From West Point and the U.S. Military Academy and the Army football team, we wish you all a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Jim Young and his wife Jane have made their home in West Point now for the past six years. He took a year out of coaching after he'd been at Purdue and said he wanted to get back in at West Point particularly because he wanted to restore the program and because of the great respect he had for the military tradition and the quality of athlete he would be coaching at the academy. Alabama's got the ball now first down at the 15-yard line. They trail 7-0 with 5.55 to go. First quarter. David Smith with his backs in the eye. That's a toss to Murray Hill with Stewart leading the way around the left side. And Hill down by Troy Lingley, the aggressive linebacker. Offensive line now for the Crimson Tide. And uh, they have a huge weight advantage. Roger Schultz is the center. Though he doesn't have a big advantage. Larry Rose, the All-SEC performer, and Chris Robinette are the guards. The tackles do have definite weight advantage. It's Drew Morgan and Chapman. 285 each, and Bill Curry announces their weight each year, each week in front of the whole team, and they applaud depending upon where they are at 285 or above. <laughs> Second down and 10. Two new wide receivers are in, and Smith hands it off. Murray Hill tackles. He gets out near the 19 and third and long facing Alabama again. Defensive front for Army. The most emotional player on the ball club, Dan Cooney, is joined by Will Huff and Josh Haynes, who missed the Navy game, but is back in today. Lingley and Davey are the linebackers. And the secondary is Greg Gatson. Uh, other linebackers, Chuck Schrutzman. We met the secondary earlier. Third and seven, David Castile is the deep back in the eye. Seven nothing, Army leads. Play fake, Smith looks, fires right side. Caught by Greg Payne, that's a first down, Alabama at the 31. But one of the great things that David Smith has done all year long is fake. And it's one of those subtle things, I think, that goes unnoticed much uh, by many people, but also helps you win ball games. That time he did a wonderful job of faking the ball to David Castile, and that allowed Greg Payne plenty of time to run that little hook route for the first down. Second time, Smith has found a receiver on third and long. And it's first down, Alabama at the 32, 7-0. Army leads. Toss to the weak side of the field. David Castile, who alternates much of the game with Murray Hill, and this time it's good for a two-yard game before Will Huff, number 78, makes the uh, stop. You know, Vern Roger Schultz there, the center for Alabama. Interesting guy. You know, lots of guys get themselves ready to play in different ways. Well, each week before his opponent, no matter who it is, he reminds himself how that school didn't recruit him. He was not a highly recruited guy, and that's how he gets himself ready. He's done a nice job all year. I love the description that Homer Smith gave of him yesterday. Our center is small and round. <laughs> Looks like a cantaloupe with legs. <laughs> Smith back. Across the middle, dropped. Robert Stewart, the fullback, who's caught only eight all season, tried to make it nine and couldn't. Although he's got very nice hands, he's a big guy, 253 pounds as a fullback, and has pretty soft hands. Amazing guy because he can get you tough yardage inside, yet he has generally soft hands to be able to catch the ball. I wonder if he's met Craig Hayward. <laughs> For a meal? Yeah. 
and, and who picked up the check? Third down and eight. 327 to go. First quarter. Again, a three-man rush and no pressure on Smith, which allows him to find Frank Payne again. And that's not putting any pressure on David Smith. Well, now they're not because the offensive line is doing a nice job of protecting them. But that was another example of David Smith throwing what I call as a catchable ball. You don't have to adjust much when David Smith is on. He throws most balls right in the numbers so that you just stick your hands out and you catch the ball. A lot of quarterbacks you have to adjust here and there, but not with David Smith. Smith is now four out of eight for 56 yards. He's hitting 61% for the year. First and 10 at the 47. Crimson Tide have been across midfield once. They tried to the dive play with the fullback. Kevin Turner, number 24, and he's out near the 50. Right now, let's go down and check in with John Dockery. John? You know, two years ago, Vern, right here on this turf in the Sun Bowl against Washington, this man, Bobby Humphrey, had three touchdowns, including a 64-yarder. Now, you had the operation six weeks ago. Uh, was it a success? Yes, everything went well. I get x-rays started next week. You know, Dr. Fowler said everything went well with the surgery and everything. You know, we're going to come back after this play. Bob, back to you, though, Vern. All right, John, we've got a second down at the 50. Second down and seven. Smith with a play fake, and the blitz is on by Army. They go right again, and it's Greg Payne, that same little pattern. Worked well for the first down at the 36. We go back to John and Bobby. Okay, Bobby, uh, your plans for the future, you have an option. You can come back in a medical red shirt, or you can go pro. What are you going to do? Well, as of now, I'm keeping everything just stay with just thinking about the whole situation. Looking over all of, you know, the point of views that I can do and all the options that I have. And right now, I'm, you know, I'm going to base my decision on how well the foot will be and how well it comes. How well the foot is. Okay, Vern. All right, we wish him well, regardless of the decision. First down, 10 now. Deepest penetration by Alabama. Four-man rush, Smith overthrows. His intended receiver, Prince Wimbley, one of four true freshmen who have participated for the Alabama Crimson Tide in 88. Well, they get a name like Prince, you know he's going to be a wide receiver. Absolutely. Plays way, plays way out there. Two he? things are sure. A guy named Lance and a guy named Prince are not going to be defensive tackles. So you play outside, that's right. But he's got a bright future in front of him, only a freshman in Alabama. They're very high on Prince. Wimbley, a freshman out of Miami, Florida. Turner and Hill, the backs now, on second down and 10. 2.46 to go. First quarter, 7 0 Army leads. Murray Hill, big hole. And he is finally cut down by O'Neill Miller at the 11 yard line. But a huge hole allows the 25 yard gain for Murray Hill, who, like Mike Mayweather of Army, is only 5'7, 170. And look at the offensive line, particularly the right side. Robinette, the left, uh, the right guard, and Chapman, the right tackle. They block down, and then Larry Rose pulls the left guard and traps and clears the huge hole for Murray Hill to run through. Watch Larry Rose, number 74, right through the, the hole right there. And then again, he is small. He hides behind those big offensive linemen, and then he's got that tremendous burst off the cut, which Murray Hill has shown us all year long. Player is injured at the uh, six-yard line. And while they tend to him, we'll take timeout with a score seven nothing. Green, so three call because the Army defense has time. This time, though, Alabama comes right back and runs away from the slant, and that opens up a huge hole for Murray Hill as Larry Rose, the left guard, leaves the trap. You see the stunt to the right; they stunted right out of it and created a hole by the stunt itself. Homer Smith, of course, was once the head coach at West Point for a period back in the 70s. He said this week he chose not to talk about that. He's been very quiet about his dismissal at West Point. And off to Murray Hill. He's jammed up as he gets near the 10-yard line. The tackle made by Troy Lindley, the defensive captain of Army in a one-time walk-on. And that's a great story of Troy Lingley from gumming from a walk-on to uh, being that team captain. But what he does, again, he f hides there in the hole. Dan Cooney, the nose tackle, occupies a couple offensive linemen, and that allows Lingley to make the play. Second down and nine, 2-10 to go, first quarter. David Castillo in as the deep back in the eye on second and nine. Five-man front for Army. And Smith back with a short drop. Now he might scramble. He'll run. Flag is down. And so is Smith as he gets to the six. The flag near the line of scrimmage. Vern, that was a terrific defensive call. And what happened, they baited David Smith into an audible. 
we get the uh, holding call against Alabama, but David Smith looked like he saw a blitz, and that's what Army defense gave him. They backed out of it and took the play away. Bill Curry looks on as the holding call will be walked off. Curry, the 45-year-old second-year head coach at Alabama. Still second down. There's the call. And, Vern, this has been part of Alabama's problem this uh, year. When they get inside the 20-yard line, they have not been able to punch the ball in. Again, Homer Smith was talking to us about that yesterday. It's been kind of frustrating for him. They've had to attempt way too many field goals. Well, the word he used to describe their offense inside the 20 was terrible. <laughs> He's honest, yeah. Pretty candid. 65-yard drive. This will be the 12th play. They can get the first down without the touchdown. It's second down and 19. And again, very little rush. Smith across the middle overthrows the receiver at the two-yard line. Marco Battle was open. And the pass a little too high. It'll be third and 19. I think what Alabama and David Smith was expecting there was a kind of a man-for-man -man defense, which most teams use inside the 20. So they ran a crossing route, which is a good call against a man-for-man -man defense. However, Army ran the zone, change of pace, ran the zone, and it was made it a tough throw for Smith. Third and 19. 135 to go, first quarter. The cadets lead 7 0. Third and 19 from the 20. Four man rush, make the draw, go deep right side for Payne, incomplete. O'Neill Miller, number 14, defending. O'Neill Miller was the cons uh, really the concern of Homer Smith and the coaching staff and offense at Alabama. He's playing free safety, but that time he made the play on Greg Payne. He's done a great job so far in this game supporting the run, and that time covering the corner route by Payne. That will bring on Philip Doyle, who will attempt a 37-yard field goal out of Chris Moore's hold. Doyle, 19 of 31 for the year. good but Alabama does have to settle for three after they had obtained a first and ten from the 11 the 37 yard field goal by Philip Doyle narrows the margin to 7 to 3 125 to go first quarter a CBS Sports Sunday Special Edition Winterfest coming up on Sunday featuring World Cup skiing from Val d'Isere, Air France. Billy Kidd and neighbor of mine at Steamboat Springs is going to be a part of that. And we uh, talked about it the other day. Said it was a very interesting program from Val d'Isere. The World Junior Figure Skating Championships also on. And interviews with speed skater Dan Jansen and ski jumper Eddie the Eagle Edwards. <laughs> That's all followed by the NBA, the Lakers, at the Utah Jazz. And do not equate the athletic talents of Eddie the Eagle Edwards with Magic Johnson. Yeah. But you'll see them both on Sunday. Jerry Sloan, of course, has taken over for Frank Layton at the Utah Jazz. And I think all of us will miss Frank Layton's personality in the NBA. He's still associated with the Jazz, of course, but not on the bench. Doyle will kick off in this 7-3 ball game, and uh, Mike Mayweather and Henry and Oliver are deep. Mayweather. Big hole. Nice return out to the 31-yard line. Tackle made by Jimbo Salem on the 30-yard return, and we go down to John. The Mules. Yeah, but remember I mentioned the mules will be here. Well, they have made it. It's not Spartacus and Blackjack, but rather two replacement mules who got here late locally off waivers, and their names are Solomon and, this is for real, Miss Elegant Ass. Now back to you, Vern. <laughs> Merry, Merry Christmas. <laughs> it's all yours. Yeah. yeah, thank you, John. Mike Mayweather, that's a great lead line. Mike Mayweather carries out the 34 yard line. And I'm not going to ask which was which. So Mike Mayweather is a terrific young man. Talking to him yesterday, he's saying playing on this team is a lot like being in the Army. You're really playing for the guy next to you. And you really get that sense of team when you're around this cadet squad. Second down and eight. Seven to three. Army leads it. Final minute, first quarter. Go, 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 go. 
They try the pullback, and uh, the Crimson Tide defense stiffens this time as Cornette is stopped at the 35 yard line. He was stopped, I think, inside by Keith McCants and by Derek Thomas. But Keith McCants, I think, is going to be the one who succeeds Derek Thomas as the next great linebacker at Alabama. Of course, there was Cornelius and Derek, and then I think Keith McCants will be the next guy. McCants got up to 262 pounds in the spring, and it didn't affect his speed at all. Still ran a 4-5. Third and six. Seven to three, Army Legion. They try Mayweather. No, it's Barnett again. And as you saw early, he doesn't have great speed. Allowing Kermit Kendrick to catch up with him, but that is a 25-yard run for the fullback to complement the 51-yarder he had to set up the first touchdown. But it's been the sequencing of plays which has really been the key here as Barnett comes up and everybody thought it was the outside. He broke through a tackle. Osmond, number 42, missed the tackle. And it was only Kendrick who came from the backside to prevent a long, long run. That's the end of the first quarter in the John Hancock Sun Bowl with our score, Army 7, Alabama 3. CBS Sports will return after this message and a word from your local station. Alabama, the two teams meeting on this glorious morning for the first time ever. And Army has a 7-0-7-3 lead rather over Alabama. And the football with a first down and 10 following Ben Barnett's 25-yard run. They, they, why not? They'll give it to him again. As the junior from Roanoke, Virginia, lunges down into the 33-yard line. Let's bring you up to date on what's happened thus far. Mike Mayweather, 31 yards and a touchdown so far. For the Cadets, Alabama, 114 total yards. The Army rushing defense averaging 96 yards. It should be the Alabama rushing defense averaging 96 yards per game. And Army is well beyond that already. Quarterback keeper, McWilliams down to the 30. Keith McCants, number 86, makes the tackle. Vern, I don't think Jim Young, as a head coach uh, at Army, gets enough credit. He, he's really doing something right. He's obviously won as a head coach at uh, Arizona. He won as a head coach at Purdue. He really done a great job at Army. He doesn't get the most highly skilled athlete, but he's designed an offense. He runs an offensive defense that fits the kind of players and personnel that he has perfectly, and he plays to their strengths, and that's discipline and intensity. Jim Young switched to the wishbone in his second year at Army. He said it's the best offense we can run for the type of athlete we can recruit. Make to the fullback, Mac Williams still has the pitch available. He'll keep and cuts down to the 10, to the 5. Touchdown, Army! In the long, wonderful history of Army, no Army football team has ever won 10 games in a single season. And here are the cadets, two touchdown underdogs, about to go up 14 to three after that 30 yard McWilliams run. Five foot four inch Keith Walker. The senior from Tom's River, New Jersey will try the extra point. I love guys who overcome some adversity. Brian McWilliams started this year as the third team quarterback of this team. He started camp as actually one of 11 quarterbacks, but he has really made a difference since the third game of the uh, season this year. He's got very good speed, and what he has is nice vision, too, and he doesn't lose speed when he makes the cut. When he cut back inside there, he didn't waste any time, and he accelerated through some arm tackles. Again, watch the left halfback right here block McCants right here, and that is the key. Anytime there's a big play in the wishbone, one of the lead backs is going to throw the key block. McCants goes down because of the block by Cass, and Cass is one of the most unselfish players on this Army team. Two other keys to that play, Charles Gardner, the safety, went for the eye fake and took the pitch man, and then for the second time in this drive, we saw Lee Osmond, the rover back, overplayed. And get out of position. No, the, uh, the wishbone is a strange formation. It's one of the few times you see defensive players running away from the ball carrier because they have responsibility for the pitch and the fullback, etc. And that's what happened there to Charles Gardner. 30-yard touchdown run 
And this ground attack led by Brian McWilliams has uh, ripped open the Alabama defense in the first quarter in a minute. 166 yards on the ground already. Rampish with the kick. Good and Kent for the deep man. And this is Pierre Good. And through the haze of the howitzer, he is down to the 27-yard line. 27-yard return. A week from Monday, Matt and I will be in Dallas for the Cotton Bowl Classic, UCLA and Arkansas. And, of course, Troy Aikman making a visit to what apparently will become his home for the next 20 years. The quarterback of UCLA probably going to be the number one pick of the Dallas Cowboys. That's coming up next Monday. And Arkansas, I don't think, has gotten the respect it deserves this season. Smith back. Caught and dropped. Dan Cooney, number 69. The most emotional player defensively for the cadets. And eight members of his family are here. Dan is the middle of 11 kids. He's right in the middle. Two older brothers, two older sisters, three younger brothers, three younger sisters. He said with all those sisters, six of them, we never got a chance to use the bathroom. We had to get a number. From Cape Cod area in Massachusetts, Dan Cooney makes the sack. Second down at 20. 14 to 3 Army. Smith across the middle. And it's caught by Kevin Turner out near the 28-yard line. They get the original yardage back. And we're talking about guys who've overcome adversity. Dan Cooney, the man who just made the sack on the previous play, is one of those guys. Uh, his freshman year at the academy had a tough time with chemistry as he runs off the field. Actually failed it twice. Had to leave uh, Army. Went to Providence College. Passed chemistry. It would have been easy for him not to come back, but he did because it means so much to him. And he's had a great year. Three of five on third down conversions. Third and nine here. Smith out of the shotgun. Flag down. And the pass tipped away by O'Neal Miller. Nice play. Now we'll see whose option it might be. Mike Thorson comes over and slaps Miller on the back. Reaction from the Alabama indicates offside. Army, another shot, a little closer in for Alabama. The surprising thing of this game so far to me, Vern, has been what's been happening in the lines. We expected Alabama to be able to control the defensive line of Army. Defense, offside, still third down and be able to dominate that line of scrimmage. But because they're running so much to the tight end side and Army is slanting that way, they're taking away most of those runs. And Alabama is going to have to make that adjustment and run back to the weak side away from the tight end. Bill Curry said this has been a season filled with grim determination. And that's how his team must approach what they've got now. Down 14-3. to three. Third and four, Smith back. Being chased by Thorson, lets it go, caught. And again, they go to Greg Payne for the third down conversion. So making excellent use of the new opportunity, Alabama picks up a first down at the 40. The nice things that Greg Payne has done this year, he's a, he's a very smart receiver. Anytime on third down when he catches the ball, he knows exactly how many yards he needs to get that first down, and he'll run the route at the right depth. A lot of receivers don't do that, and you end up in fourth and one a lot, but not Greg Payne. First down, 10 at the 40, 12, 20 to go, first down. Backs in the eye. And a 5-2 look, now six-man front for the cadets. Give it to the fullback, and Kevin Turner gets out near the 45-yard line. Tackle made by Troy Lingley, the senior out of Georgetown, Illinois, number 45. We mentioned Troy Lingley a couple of times, and we said that he was a walk-on, and, and he is so proud because he was just elected captain of this Army defense, and it was a long trail for him, a guy who came from a walk-on to be elected captain. He said, hey, I am a leader among leaders. That means an awful lot to me. Second down, four. 11.40 to go, 14 to three, Army leads. Backs in the eye, Smith will throw, no, he hands it off on the draw play. Big hole for Murray Hill, and just is down. Boy, he was a step away from scoring. And Vern, you caught it, though. You thought David Smith had the ball, and we talked about his ball handling, and everything looks the same when he's faking it and, and when he is uh, dropping back. But watch the Army defense. They don't slant this time take a little bit step to the left and they get dominated but again the, the the faking by David Smith makes this draw play work so well 
a nice hole there for Murray Hill. That's a 19-yard gain for Murray Hill. He's got 52 on the ground now in the first half. And out of the shotgun on first and 10, Smith back. Drills it again to Greg Payne. That's the fifth catch for Payne in the first half of play, and O'Neill Miller, number 14, makes the tackle. Let's check in with John Dockery. You know, Vern, I mentioned before about Larry New gathering the defense together. Well, he said, keep your poise. This time, he gathered them together and got in their face and said, hey, Willie Wyatt and the defensive front get some penetration. Then after that, Bill Curry came by and also told him, talked to him about gang tackling. So they're a little worried about the Alabama defense here on the sidelines. Back to you, Vern. All right, John. Second down and five. Alabama trails 14-3. to three. They've got a threat going now. And that tackle is made on Murray Hill as he gets inside the 30. Tackle is made by Greg Gadsden, number 98, for Army. And Vern, because the Alabama defense is having such a tough time now, it's very important for the Alabama offense on this drive to maintain possession, keep their defense off the field. But then once they get down inside the 20, get the ball into the end zone, score that touchdown. On Christmas Eve morning, we're in El Paso, Texas, the John Hancock Sun Bowl. Army running almost at will with a 14-3 lead over Alabama. Third and two, and Pierre Good is back at tailback now, number two. Again, he was a high school phenom at this position, has been a wide receiver, and here's Good with the toss. Stewart in front, first down, but flags on the play. Back at the line of scrimmage. Bill Curry and Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator at Alabama, were expecting big things that appear good. And because he has so much speed, they have to get them in their offense one way or another. Give him a chance to make a big play. Motion call against Alabama. That will happen from time to time when you get in bowl games, Vern. You haven't played in a few weeks. Illegal procedure on the offense. Still third down. Third and seven now. Interesting. Bill Curry said he, he did something he wasn't sure about this week. He had his team back in pads, and they had heavy contact in their practices because they hadn't played in so long. And he wasn't sure how they'd react to that. Third and seven, 14 to three. Army leads it. Blitz is coming. Smith goes left side. Man open. Lamond Russell, number 81, makes the catch inside the 10. First down, Alabama. Lamond Russell makes great adjustments on the ball. You're going to see David Smith, after good pass protection, throw the corner route to Russell. He is a second tight end, but watch him adjust to the ball. Some guys just have a knack to be able to do that, and Russell is one of those guys adjusted to the ball, made a nice play. Listed as a tight end, but a man with 4-5 speed at 6'1", 196. Plays in the slot formation most of the time. Splitbacks, first and goal, Alabama trailing 14 to 3. 9.27 to go, first half. Looks like an audible by David Smith at the line. They hand it off to David Castile. He is tripped behind the line by Gadsden and then is knocked down at the six. Very important for Alabama to get the ball into the end zone because this Army offense has been so good in the first half. And again, the thought goes back to the point made by Homer Smith. We are terrible inside the 20. And the last time they were here, they had a holding call and had to settle for three points. Murray Hill, Robert Stewart, the running backs now. Battle left and pain to the right on second and goal from the seventh. They'll try the Man Mountain up the middle. And Stewart, all 253 pounds, rolls down to the four where Will Huff, number 78, makes the tackle. Will Huff really got off the ball, came in there like a rock slide, fought through a couple of guys to make the play. He's a guy who's very good on this slant defense that Army uses. Now Wayne Shaw is a late arrival. Nope, he's going to come back out of the lineup. Will Huff, you saw Shaw started in and came out. Power eye set. Alabama 5 of 7 on third down conversions. They've got a third and goal now from the four. And another audible by David Smith. Three seconds to get the play snap. They do. And they run the option that Smith has caught. And again, Bill Curry's team will have to settle for an attempt for three. Give the Army defense some credit. And it was number uh, 98, Gatson, Greg Gatson, the outside linebacker who made the play. But too much penetration early. Alabama tried to run the option play, but David Smith could not get the ball pitched. 
Gadsden, a senior out of Chesapeake, Virginia. And a 22-yard effort now for Philip Doyle, who has kicked one of 37 already in the game. Chris Moore will hold. Perfect. But the story is the Army defense inside the 10 as they hold again and force Alabama into a field goal, but that does narrow the margin to 14 to 6. That's what I'm all about. Arkansas, UCLA, the Mobile Cotton Bowl, January 2nd. Back. He's got that ability to be a complete back. He can run, he can catch, he's not afraid to block. Really knows how to run nice routes. They like William Kent a lot. He is in that backfield with Stewart. Off a fake. Smith throws, and it is a first down. Pass is caught by Great Payne, number six. That's a very slow developing play to gain three yards and the first down. Payne gets up very slowly. But usually when you throw a little out pass for a first down, it's off a three-step drop. But here they it takes a long time to get developed, but still Payne makes a diving catch, comes back. You know, most of the guys are 6'2", 210, and they have a tough time really getting a good hit on him. So I just use that. I just run right up on him and say, come on, give me your best shot. And usually they're still trying to get down him, so I get away. Mike Mayweather, whose teammate and best friend at St. Louis Country Day High School, was Joe Buck, the son of Jack Buck, one of our great colleagues and uh, fine announcers at CBS. Here's the kick by Doyle, and Mayweather takes it two yards in and will return it. Out near the 28-yard line. 23-yard return. NFC wildcard game coming up Monday. The Rams, Pat Hayden's former team against the Vikings, who held on to beat Chicago and retain the wildcard berth. No rooting interest for you in that I game. I may be a little biased, but I like the Rams. I think they are coming in playing as well as anybody in the NFL, and I know you like Minnesota, but I'm going to take the Rams. It's only my Scandinavian heritage. <laughs> That's all it is. First down and 10. Left side, Mayweather. And he's out near the 27-yard line. Army with 166 yards already on the ground. They've gone left six times up the middle with Barnett. And it's been Barnett who's been a factor in this ballgame. And give the center Frank Brunners a lot of credit. Anytime your fullback is taking up that kind of yardage inside, your center has to be doing a nice job. And Brunner, one of the keys, according to Jim Shuck, the offensive coordinator for Army in this game. Second down and six, Mac Williams. And he's out across the 30 near the 32-yard line. And Army will have about a third and two, which is what they love. Exactly. Third and two is Army's kind of down. Anytime you get in third and seven, third and eight, you need great athletes at quarterback and wide receiver and in the skill positions. Army doesn't have those kinds of guys. But if they get you in third and two, they can beat anybody in America. Total offense, 117 yards passing and 59 on the ground. Army, that zero is not going to change by much in this ballgame. They only average 40 yards a game through the air. And they've got a first down on the ground again out here at the 34. The wishbone, too, does for you, Vernon, is you don't have negative plays. And, again, that's what the Alabama defense has feasted on all year is creating negative plays. I think they've had over 300 rushes, but only one of those have they been caught for a loss. One of the things I find extraordinary about Jim Young's wishbone offense is seven lost fumbles in 11 games. For a wishbone team, that's just outrageous. Because you think about the Oklahoma teams that turn the ball over so much, but it's because the quarterback, Brian McWilliams, makes the right decisions. First and 10 Army with a 14-6 lead. There's McWilliams with the pitch. Calvin Cass gets the carry for one of the first times. A fumble with the ball down. Yes, it was. McCants of Alabama argues with that decision. Kermit Kendrick, number 27, made the tackle. Calvin Cass is the right halfback in the wishbone formation, and with most wishbone formations, the right halfback doesn't carry the ball much because with quarterbacks being right-handed, they usually pitch the ball when they run to their right, but he's been a, done a great job of blocking on the year. Second down at three, 
hit behind the line and Barnett interesting Ben Barnett and you've seen him run with great abandon this ball game has now carried the ball 307 times in his career that's up to date and in those 307 carries he has lost yardage exactly once and that was one time against Lafayette this year for a yard. He's got a great body to lean about him. He's always moving forward and he leans his body forward so he's not going to get caught from any losses. Third and one. Calvin Cass. And that looks like it'll be another Army first down. Boy, they do roll. That seems appropriate for an Army team on the ground. You, know, you hope the Army's good on the ground, yeah. But Alabama, if they're going to stop this wave, so to speak, they're going to have to do a much better job on oh. first down defense. They need some penetration so that they're not gaining four, five, six yards on first down. Wave, huh? First down and 10. 445 to go first half. Six. And the pitch, Calvin Cass around the corner and out of bounds to stop the clock at 47. Interesting, Pat, you and I were guests at the uh, Sun Bowl luncheon here on Thursday. The guest speaker, speaker was the most illustrious graduate athletically of the Naval Academy, Roger Staubach. There were two things in my life I never thought I would see. The Dallas Cowboys finishing dead last in the NFL and Roger Staubach being the guest speaker at a banquet honoring Army. And they both happened in the same month. Second down and seven. Oh, McCants comes in and makes the tackle right as the pitch is made. And Mayweather, after the great pitch by McWilliams, gets a first down. That was a nice play by Brian McWilliams, the quarterback from Army. As you see here, you see instant pressure quickly by McCants, number 86. And McWilliams has to make up his mind quickly. And that's one of the things in the option. I don't think quarterbacks get enough credit for reading defenses. They always talk about passers, but the option quarterbacks have to read defenses just as well. First down 10, 14 to 6, Army leads. They are 9 and 2 coming into the ball game. The counter play right side. And again, the magic in the backfield works effectively. This time it's John Mangum with the tackle, number 29. I'm amazed at how well Army has run on first down as Mayweather is slow getting up. But they take very large line splits. You'll see that from the Army team. Large line splits creating holes. Mike Mayweather down for the second time in the ball game. He was injured early and came back. Positions are out on the field and time has been called. Rich St. Rose is a study in determination. He's a junior at a Riverside, California. In his three years at Army, he has not had a chance to play a down yet. But he prepares himself each week with the belief that he may get that chance. He's practiced hard for three years, and he's hoping that opportunity is going to come today. Jim Young has suited up 129 cadets for this game, so Rich St. Rose is not the only man about whom that story could be told, but one of several. Two a days, practice every day, plus the academics. Here's Calvin Cass with a halfback pass. Man wide open, Sean Gordon, and he overthrows him. Little, oh, they had it set up perfectly. But, Vern, I'm a little surprised. Cass being a right-hander running that play to the left, if he didn't have to adjust and turn his hip so much, for example, if he were going to the right, it would have been a much easier throw for Cass. That's an incomplete pass, and Gordon was down there. Here you're going to see Cass, although Jordan is wide open, he has to turn his hips. He throws the ball a little bit too much on a line drive, didn't get enough air on it, but Jordan was wide open for an easy score. That is the first pass of the day, the third time Calvin Cass has thrown a pass this year, and he has yet to complete it, so he might score that one for 89. <laughs> that may be why he hasn't completed it. They keep running it left. And off to Barnett again. Oh, boy, have they worked that fullback well. Lee Osmond, number 42, makes the tackle. Again, Bill Gephardt, the left guard, and Frank Brunner, the center, have done a very nice job of controlling the people inside the Lau Barnett. Watch these guys inside as they create a couple of holes for Barnett to find his way. Double team on the left side there, and Barnett reads that double team so well and, and hugs that block for the big game. 
The handoff goes left side down to the 25-yard line. Charles Gardner makes the tackle. Calvin Cass, the ball carrier. And Army with a 14-6 lead. They came in as 14-point underdogs. 9-2. The only losses this year for the Cadets came in game number two at Washington. And they almost came back and tied that game up late. They lost at 31-17. And then they went to Dublin, Ireland in the Emerald Isle Classic and really were blown out by Boston College. That's the one game in which they did not have much of a chance to win. That play is stuffed near the line of scrimmage as Derek Thomas, number 55. Um, first time we've called his name in this quarter, I think. Well, again, they've optioned off him, and they've run away from him some, but I have seen Derek Thomas play a number of times this year, and I do admire, well, I do admire about him as he plays just as hard on first down as he does on third and eight. It's easy to get up a third and eight, but he plays hard every down. Third and five right now. Quick pass incomplete. That's a pretty good example of why Army doesn't throw the ball much. <laughs> Last in Division 1A. It's 104 teams in Division 1A, and they rank 104th in passing. Well, here's one reason they don't. When they throw the ball six times or less in Jim Young's career with the wishbone, they're 25-0. and 0. When they throw it nine times or less, 34-4. and 4. When they have to go to 10 passes or more, they're not very good. 3-15-1. 41-yard field goal attempt now for Keith Walker, who is 15 of 18 for the year, and that's blocked. That was deflected. It may have been Derek Thomas. And if so, it's the sixth, sixth in his block career. in his career. Third this year. I think that's a remarkable statistic if, in fact, it was Derek. But he blocked five kicks coming into the game. I think it was Derek Thomas. And that's number six in the career. Watch him on the left side of the screen. A lot of guys can beat you different ways. He can do a sack in the quarterback. Blocking kicks as he did right there. But that is a remarkable statistic. Six block kicks in his career at Alabama. 147 to go first half, and it stays 14 to 6. Team first man to earn five letters at Army since 1929. He also overcame great adversity and had a special moment on Thursday when he was commissioned as a second lieutenant in the regular Army. His teammates gathered around. In 1986, Ed Schultz overcame Hodgkin's disease. It made me realize uh, the people who, you know, there's a lot of people that were less fortunate than me who uh, were, you know, are sick and don't come out of it as well as I did. Um, and I feel for them. Uh, also, you know, maybe my story may help some, you know, some little kid or something who, uh, who got sick himself. Maybe see that as he can come back too. He was once a starting tackle because of the l diminished lung capacity. He moved to tight end and is now listed as a third teamer, but he's a second lieutenant, and it's quite a story. And Bernie said it's a very special Christmas for him. Third down and ten, Alabama. Play fake, Smith back. Has time again. And has a man open. That's a first down. As Greg, uh, it's Marco Battle, not Greg Payne. And Alabama does move the chain. And boy, did Marco Battle do a nice job of coming back to the ball. He gets into those soft zones in the defense, but he didn't wait around for the ball to arrive. He took two steps back to the quarterback to make the catch with his hands. 105 to go in the half. 14 to 6. Army leads it. First and 10 at the 43. That's caught. Battle again. First down at the 22. And David Smith did a nice job of looking the defense off. He looked right first. The safety went that way. Then he found battle again on the left side. It's one of those little subtle things the quarterback can do to help his team just look that free safety off. That gave battle a chance to find a soft spot where the safety left and make the catch. Time has been called by the Crimson Tide as David Smith comes over to chat with David Curry coming up tomorrow, a CBS Sports Sunday Special Edition Winterfest featuring World Cup skiing from Val d'Isere, France, the World Junior Figure Skating Championships, and interviews with speed skater Dan Jansen of the United States and ski jumper Eddie the Eagle Edwards. That's at 2 o'clock Eastern Time tomorrow, and it'll be followed by the NBA on CBS as John Stockton and the Jazz take on Magic Johnson and the Los Angeles Lakers. Lakers lost four in a row before going back home and uh, winning their first. Yeah, but Magic's still having a great year. I know yes, he is. Well, he is having maybe his best year, some people are saying. 
a great, uh, great young man he is. Done, done an awful lot out in the community. Believe me, in Los Angeles, Magic Johnson has. Well, that's coming up tomorrow. And as we resume play before this uh, not quite full house on Christmas Eve morning in El Paso, Texas, the Alabama Crimson Tide will have a first down of 21 with 54 seconds to go. And one timeout remaining. Shotgun again. Five-man front for Army, and they show a blitz look, see if they drop back. They do. No blitz. Smith, man open again. Payne, well, he's finding the holes in the zone now. Absolutely, but it's tougher and tougher to find those holes against the zone defense when you get inside the 10-yard line. That tackle made by Mike Thorson, 47 seconds to go. Good pass protection for David Smith has been a key to the last couple of completions. On the first down, the clock stops. Now it's started. This time they're coming. Smith in the end zone. Touchdown! Marco Battle. And that is his first touchdown catch of the year. Some quarterback beats you with their arm. David Smith can do it with your with his head. Jim Nance liked it. And he'll probably talk about it in just a couple of minutes coming up at halftime. Marco Battle from David Smith. And now Alabama will not go for two. They'll settle for Philip Doyle's extra point try. What David Smith does so well is find the right receiver to throw to very quickly. A lot of quarterbacks take time, but Smith finds his guy quickly. First, he looks to his left. Nothing is there. He comes right back after the blitz. He saw the blitz inside. He knew he was going to get man-for-man -man coverage. And Marco Battle had run the post route, and that's right where David Smith went. Ernest Boyd, number 37, appeared to have responsibility for him. Let's look. Watch, well, you're going to see the blitz in here, but Battle comes right inside. Good protection here for David Smith. But again, the key, the free safety was out covering the halfback because he had to on the blitz. That left the middle wide open for Battle. And the touchdown comes with 35 seconds to go in the first half. Marco Battle from Phoenix City, Alabama. That is his first touchdown catch of the year. And he was a, a big factor in that last drive. 14-13 Army. That is a big emotional lift for the Tide as they go into halftime. And it's probably going to carry over to the second half. Mayweather and Henry and Oliver are deep for Army as Doyle kicks off. Strip kick. Take it short at the 35-yard line. John out near the 35-yard uh, line. With 31 seconds remaining in three timeouts, remember Army does not throw the football, but if they can come up with a big play, they have a chance in their option game. Got a moment? Let's go down to John Dock. You know, Vern, you and Pat were talking about that last touchdown. Well, the cornerback Boyd was expecting help inside from the free safety Miller. As a matter of fact, after the play, they were arguing with one another. But as Pat pointed out, the free safety had to cover the back out of the backfield. So mistake by the corner. Back to you. Here's a reverse to Sean Gordon, and that doesn't work either. In the final 30 seconds of the half, Spencer Hammond, number 44, makes the tackle, and then a flag uh, flies on the far side. A little battle broke out. Mike Brown, Braun looked like he was part of it, number 72 for Army. Big eight officiating crew today. Dead ball, personal fight. First down. That's about as succinct an explanation of a penalty <laughs> as I have ever heard. He is very low key, isn't he? Uh, Dead ball. Louderback. Personal fall. White. <laughs> Pretty like, well summarized. Sounds like Ray Scott. <laughs> Boyd. <laughs> Dowler. Touchdown. touchdown. Now all of a sudden, though, Vern, Army has a chance maybe to get three on the board before halftime. 19 seconds remaining with three timeouts left. Jim Young is arguing about the scoreboard clock, which on a dead ball foul was allowed to restart and is down to 14 seconds. The clock was running. Should go back to 18 seconds, I believe. And here comes J.C. Louderbeck heading for the telephone. 
And while he uh, converses upstairs, here's the dead ball foul. There it was. Well, yeah. that wasn't much of a foul, was it? No. I, they called it on Derek Thomas. He was going at Mike Braun, but he didn't look like much of a personal foul to me. It's been suggested that that was an impersonal foul. <laughs> Here's Lauterbach, who's hunting desperately for the phone. <laughs> Somewhere down there is... I know we installed one. But and you... so there's a, there's a uh, wait here. Jim uh, Young is right that clock should not have started. And four seconds elapsed, they should reset it to 18. And that's what Lauterbach is trying to get squared away. Well, he, we're back to semaphores, which seems appropriate here in the Southwest. He's using hand signals. <laughs> Smoke signals, and here's a headset. He was he was using hand signals up to the booth, trying to indicate how many seconds should be left. Now they've apparently reset it at 19 seconds. <laughs> millions and millions and millions of dollars, and it's four fingers and five fingers. <laughs> and Jim Young, what is what is debate? Well, he was quick to spot that clock running down, though. 14-13, Army over Alabama. Walker's longest kick of the year for a field goal was 46 yards, so they're still going to need maybe 10 or 15 yards to give them a chance to kick a field goal. And again, the uh, only two passes have been incomplete such, thus far. There's the toss to Calvin Cass. Oh, boy. Out of bounds at the 32, so now they've got a 49-yard possibility. Keith McCants makes the tackle and still 15 seconds remaining. And a nice change of pace running the option play into the boundary. They'd run that into the wide side of the field a couple times. That time they ran into the boundary, beautifully timed by McWilliams on the pitch to Cass. Keith Walker getting set in case he gets a chance. McWilliams. Almost intercepted at the 10-yard line. Intended for Doug Baker, the tight end who's caught seven this year, and Osmond, Lee Osmond, was back defending. And 11 seconds remain. You're really asking a quarterback, Brian McWilliams, to do something he's not comfortable doing, and that is throwing the football in this situation. They've had some success running the, uh, the option play and pitch play, and I think that's what McWilliams ought to be doing now rather than throwing it. And Army does have timeouts remaining. They go to the weak side again, and Calvin Cass is out of bounds to stop the clock inside the 30 at the 27, and that ought to bring on Walker. What a nice block he got by Mike Maywood in the lead back. So the penalty, the personal foul, allowed Army the opportunity to get inside, and Derek Thomas blocked the last attempt by Keith Walker. This will be a 44-yard field goal. And it's blocked again. Thomas, Derek Thomas blocked it again. That's two in the first half as the clock sounds. That is incredible. Derek Thomas gets up on the wide side of the defense. Normally it's defensive backs out there, but he got a great jump on the ball and blocked his second field goal attempt. Bottom of the screen. Watch how quickly he gets off the ball. And ordinarily, it's tiny little defensive backs that try to do that. But again, he is 6'4", 230 pounds. What a player. And as he told us, he plays with passion. There's an example of it. The end of the half with our score. Army 14-13. to Jim Nance back with the College Football Report after this message and a word from your local station. CBS Sports coverage of the John Hancock Sun Bowl is sponsored by Toyota. There's quality. Who could ask for anything more? Platters. There's a whole lot of nothing going on. Platters. And by John Hancock Financial Services. Real life. Real answers. Fourteen thirteen. The cadets of West Point lead the Crimson Tide of Alabama at halftime. We begin quarter number three as Britt Rambush will kick off for Army and the deep man is Pierre Goode, number two for the Alabama Crimson Tide. 
232 yards on the ground in the first half for this Army football team. Alabama got a late touchdown and then blocked another field goal, and here's the kick. Good drifts back and takes it four yards into the end zone and will come out. And it turned out to be an unwise decision. Moments ago, John Dockery talked with Alabama coach Bill Curry about what he said at halftime. What'd you tell him at the half? Well, we got to do away with the stupid penalties. We've got to get to our assignment and tackle people. And we got to connect. We've had people wide open. We've missed them. Um, we did have a decent drive there toward the end. But we got to play much better in the second half to win this game. David Smith threw for 193 yards in the first half and got the touchdown to Marco Battle. He'll operate from the shotgun on first down from the 14. Five-man rush, and Smith goes right side to Greg Payne, who caught it out of bounds. It's an incomplete pass. Houston Oilers has scored on the Cleveland Browns up in Cleveland. 7-3 to three now in the AFC wildcard game. That game's still in the second quarter. Interesting that uh, Alabama comes out to open the second half in a shotgun formation down deep in their own territory. Clearly, they think they can throw those out passes, which they did, did some in the first half. That time, David Smith was a little bit wide with the throw. They'll hand it off this time to Wayne Shaw, number 43, who is the third team fullback, and he gets out near the 20-yard line. We have an injury report from the Alabama bench. Robert Stewart is out for the game with a bruised knee, so Kevin Turner and Wayne Shaw will apparently rotate at that position. Shaw, a senior from Tullahoma, Tennessee, a 204-pounder. It'll be third down and four now. Third and three official. Backs in the eye. 14 to 13 Army leads. Cornerback blitz. Shaw being chased by Thorson and it's incomplete. As Mike Thorson, number 40, applied a bit of pressure on the blind side of David Smith. There's Mike Thorson. Talk about your, your uh, student athletes. His grade point average at West Point, 4.021. That's above perfect because of the A-pluses. He's not a perfect student, though. He had an A-minus in swimming. Reminds me of one of the guys I played with in college. He had three Fs and a D, and the head coach pulled him aside and said, son, I think you're spending a little too much time in one subject. Way to go. <laughs> Classmate of yours. Good Here. player, though. Paul Wynn. And he's dropped at the 37-yard line. <laughs> Coming up a week from Monday, Pat and I will be in Dallas for the Mobile Cotton Bowl Classic. Live at 1.30 Eastern Time, UCLA and Arkansas. Troy Aikman visits Dallas for a week prior to uh, apparently spending much of uh, the remaining days of his active athletic career there. UCLA and Troy Donahue. Terry Donahue. There you go. There's a, there's a mistake for which I'll apologize. First down and 10. Wishbone team, 232 yards in the first half. Frank Williams keeps, rounds the corner out to the 44. Watch the last punt by Chris Moore. All punters, believe me, can be fit. Some pun punters can be physical. They're not all wimps. Look at them hang in there and battle the Army team. Chris Moore has done a remarkable job this year kicking the football and that time being physical. Hit Daryl Sherb and knocked yeah. it backwards. Second down and four. And again, the keeper by McWilliams. Closes the first down at the 48-yard line. McWilliams out of Lincoln, Nebraska. George Bethune makes the tackle. Here's how the wishbone has gone. The halfback pitch, that's been what they have featured. But a lot of the tough yards have come inside by the fullback. You see most of the yards there. A little bit surprising to me that Army's been able to do that because this Alabama defense has been so good all year long. But they're forced to play a different kind of defense. They can't be nearly as aggressive playing a wishbone team. 14th first down for the cadets of West Point. They have a 14-13 lead, 13-26 remaining. McWilliams, a 5'10", 180-pounder, a very quiet young man. And he pitches back to Mayweather, who is anything but quiet. Mayweather, he of the bubbly personality. We were laughing with him 
yesterday about his poly shoes. He said he keeps a pair, especially for inspections, hidden away. Let's go down to... We've got about three pair of shoes. He says when he knows the inspections are coming up, he wears the plastic ones with a real nice shine on them. I wonder if he'll try and get those boots past the inspections. <laughs> Second down and six. Now let's go down to John Dockery. You know, Vern, coming out of the locker room, I had a chance to talk to Derek Thomas. I said, Derek, what's the problem? Army's moving the ball so well on you. He smiled and said, you know, we've never seen the wishbone run at this kind of speed. In practice, it was much slower, but big smile came to his face. We have it figured out now. You'll see it in the second half. <laughs> so we'll find out, Vern. <laughs> well, that's interesting that he said Army is, has the speed because you don't equate the cadets with uh, the faster football teams in the country. And there. Hello. <laughs> How appropriate. <laughs> he did have it figured out. Again, you think of him making so many big plays as he did here on the after the bootleg by McWilliams. But again, he's a disciplined player, even though he makes big plays. Sometimes you know, those things don't go well together. But you can see the kind of career he has had at Alabama. 45 of those 52 sacks have come in the last two years. 27 this year. And, of course, he just got one there. Rambush punts it deep to Murray Hill. At the 14. Got some room. Got a lot of room. And Rambush can't make the tackle. This will be a touchdown. But there are flags down at the other end of the field. So hold everything. Murray, Murray Hill has been a great punt returner for the Tide all year long. Although it looks like they're going to bring this one back. But what he does, he doesn't wait around. He doesn't dance and go from sideline to sideline, Vern. He sees a little hole, a little gap, and he is off north and south. Break it back. Clipping on the offense. The top right of the screen, and you will see the clip. Right there is one of the... Army defenders went down, and there was the flag. That is an 89-yard return wiped out and made into a 15-yard return because of the penalty. <laughs> he who giveth sometimes taketh away. Derek Thomas, who had the sack, just was guilty of the clip that wiped out that 89-yard punt return by Murray Hill. On the right of the screen, there is Derek Thomas and the clip from behind. And in his frustration, he stayed on the ground for quite some time, knew immediately that he was the man who was guilty of the clip. So the All-American, who's been a standout on special teams, obviously, that time cost his club a touchdown. First and 10 at the 15-yard line now. Still a 14-13 ball game. Backs in the eye. David Castillo, the senior out of Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. And an update, the Oilers have scored again on Cleveland 14-3, but I'm sure memories of a week ago and a 23-7 lead that disappeared are uh, thundering around in their helmets. But they lead it 14-3 right now. Wayne Shaw comes in to pull back. Again, the injury report has Robert Stewart on the bench for the remainder of the game of the knee injury. And Castillo is the deep back in the eye. Opening moments, third quarter. Good ball game. 14-13. That pass to Marco Battle is good for a first down at the 29-yard line. And they take advantage of the soft corner on the left side. Nice pass protection there by the offensive line, and in particular, left guard Larry Rose, who's really starting as his last game in Alabama as a four-year starter. I talked to him yesterday, and he said, hey, I'm really sad about this. That playing for Alabama has meant an awful lot to me, and going into my last game, I really have mixed emotions. A young man who is uh, married, father of two children, will no doubt be employed in football somewhere next year. Here's Smith back. Wide open, Lamont Russell. And that should be enough to move the chain again. Again, once again, the nice adjustment by Russell. Some guys just have that ability when they get in the middle of a defense to be able to move maybe a step or two away from the coverage and get open right as the ball is thrown, and that's what Russell does. 
Russell leaves now, so does Wayne Shaw. First down, 10 Alabama. Nice conservative passing game featuring David Smith. First and 10, Crimson Tide do trail by one. Screen pass, right side. Turner. Caught and dropped at the 48. Ernest Boyd made the tackle. David Smith Byrne has been throwing the ball rather in the short zones, and that's what they like to do. Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator, believes that's what he has the best opportunity to do against this cadet defense. You see, most of the completions have come underneath the defense, underneath that zone defense. He's gone to the right side, as you can see, nine times and completed seven, 223 yards now throwing the ball. 9.52 to go, third quarter, 14-13, Army leads Alabama. Murray Hill knocked backwards. It'll be third and one, and a long one at that. You know, coming into the game, the Army defensive coaches felt they had a compelling statistic against Alabama. that They ran nearly 70% seven, of their plays to the tight end, and they thought they were going to slant that way, and that's what Alabama has done. And when Army slants that way, there's no one, nowhere for the running back to go. Battle comes into your screen right side. There's Howard Cross, a huge tight end, who is back in the lineup. Bruised rips, but still competing. Alabama excellent on third down conversion so far. And they'll throw. Blitz coming. Pass right side. Tipped away. Terrific defensive play. Ernest Boyd. The senior from Brandon, Florida. What a nice play. Ernest saves Christmas on that one. A nice play by Boyd, but that time Marco Battle did not come back for the ball. Remember, earlier in the game, he stepped back. This time he waits. If he takes one step back, Boyd doesn't have a chance to make the play. Chris Moore on to punt after the fine defensive effort by Ernest Boyd. And Paul Wynn, number 10, will wait for it. Inside the 10-yard line. Another nice punt by Moore. Wynn moves up, makes the fair catch at the 21-yard line. Eight minutes, 56 seconds, no scoring in the third quarter. Thus, it remains after the 30-yard punt, 14-13 Army. The holiday season is certainly a time to celebrate, but it's also a time to remember, and that's exactly what the Alabama players are doing with these two black helmet decals on the back of their helmets. They're remembering two of their teammates, George Scruggs, a tailback, and Willie Riles, a uh, defensive tackle, who would have been playing their last game as seniors today had they not been uh, killed two years ago. Scruggs in a car accident, Riles with a brain seizure, but in this holiday season, his t their teammates haven't forgotten. Now back to Vernon Pat. All right, Doc, 8.56 to go, third quarter. And the cadets of West Point have a first down at their own 22-yard line. They have a 14 to 13 lead. And they have done it all on the ground as they have done it all year. They test the middle with Barnett, the fullback, and he runs into George Thornton, number 94, who is coming in uh, in place of Tommy Cole now defensively. The hoping by putting Thornton in, who's a big guy at 285 pounds, that he can take up a little more space inside because that's where Army's had success, running the ball inside so they have a bigger body in there now. Gain of four in the last place, second down and six. And again, the fullback, and now third and five. Fourth coming is Willie Wyatt. The nose tackle makes the stop. And a big play or a big time here for this Alabama defense. They have them in third and five, which they haven't had them much this game. And what, what Army has done in these kinds of situations, even if they give the ball to the fullback or they pitch the ball outside, and that's what Alabama has to stop here. Third and five. McWilliams, no. And the cadets of West Point will have to give it up. Willie Wyatt makes the tackle, number 98. Derek Thomas told John Dockery, we've got it solved now. Watch Derek Thomas, who lines up all over the place and in isolation. And when he gets knocked down, well, he doesn't stay on the ground very long. He's always back up. And as a result of Derek Thomas's play, it'll be fourth down. And Britt Rambish is on the punt for the third time. That's fairly short but will bounce and take an army roll inside the 30. Now back to the 31. 
41 yard punt 40 years ago of course the Sun Bowl was played. It was Miami of Ohio playing Texas Tech here in El Paso. The head coach of Miami of Ohio was Sid Gilman. Bob Spielman kicked the extra point that gave Miami a one-point victory. But who scored the first touchdown? Our own Eric Parsegan. He suffered a separated shoulder in the second half, so played only in the first half. But Eric played here in the Sun Bowl 40 years ago. 7-13 to go, third quarter. Smith back. Left side into the flat to David Castile. Out of one tackle, and he's got an Alabama first down out of the 41-yard line before Daryl Sherb makes the tackle. David Castile is so good at it, after he catches the ball, he makes a quick cut and picks up additional five or six yards, which most running backs don't. Very good after he catches the ball. Injured player now, John Frew Morgan, who is all the way back at the 21-yard line on the far side of the field. He's the big left tackle for the Crimson Tide of Alabama. He has played very well, not only today, but all season long. Frew Morgan, who's listed at 303 pounds, and Homer Smith said, not true. We weigh them in, and he's at 282 right now. And Frew Morgan favoring that right leg. Bill Curry had a tough decision to make earlier this week when the backup quarterback Jeff Dunn was sent home. It seems that last Saturday night before the team departed Tuscaloosa, Dunn was caught by the Tuscaloosa police uh, outside a local establishment, uh, was arrested because they have a very strict liquor law in Alabama about open containers outside of buildings. And uh, Dunn didn't make the trip, but Bill said... He knew the rules, and the minute that Bill Curry heard about the arrest, he sent his backup quarterback home, so Vince Sutton is here as the backup. Back to play, first and 10, 14 to 13, 6.50 to go, third quarter. That pass caught, and Smith is again on target. Marco Battle, who's had a big ball game today. Really interesting to me, though, in that at the top of the show, we said the big uh, advantage to Alabama was in the offensive line. Yet on first down here in the second half, all we're seeing them is throwing the ball at the shotgun formation. Show the kind of respect they have for the Army Cadet defense and what they did. Saw that battle of six catches. Previous high the single game was five against Temple back in September. And they've also gone with the shotgun formation. They will not on this first down or second down, but they have gone several times. Second and one here. 14-13, Army leads it. Murray Hill comes right, and he is dropped. Oh, what a terrific play by Will Huff. That was a sensational play by Huff, who just fought through two guys on that slant defense and put the stop on Hill. Take a look here at Will Huff right here, who's just going to fight through some guys, fight through the traffic, and put an arm out. A lot of times you get blocked, but if you can just get an elbow or an arm or a hand out there, you can make a play. Three guys he, he uh, went through and got the hand right on Hill's ankle. Third and five. Smith looks right. Greg Payne, nice cut in front of Ernest Boyd as that pass was all timing. And that's another Alabama first down. Nice touch on the ball by David Smith, and it, it seems to me something about left-hander throwers. You look at Boomer Esaias and a member of Kenny Stabler. When they throw that ball with that left hand, it just seems to have a little bit more touch on it and an easier ball to catch. Have receivers told you that, that it is, that it is easier? Oh, I think so. A lot of receivers like catching the left-handed thrower's ball because of that very fact. First down, 10 Alabama, 5.27 to go, third quarter. 14-13 Army. Blitz coming, Smith reads it, hot receiver, right side, and he's loose down the sidelines. Todd Richardson with another Crimson Tide first down at the 25. Corner blitz made the easy throw for David Smith. Right here, Thornton's coming in, but a nice read both by Smith and by Richardson. Richardson sees the corner blitz, he runs the adjustment, and then puts a nice move on the safety to pick up the first down. Pat Davey made the tackle on Todd Richardson, the senior out of Syracuse, New York. First down, Alabama. They have trailed throughout. At one time, 14 to 3. First and 10. Make the draw. Screen pass. Left side. 
And a good defensive job on Lamont Russell, who then does manage to fight for yardage inside the 25. I think what Alabama is trying to do here is pick on the Army defense on the perimeter. They'll throw the ball on the out route to one side. They run the screen to the other. They're trying to stretch that defense to give them a little soft spot to run the ball inside from tackle to tackle. Saw Jim Young prowling the sideline. Jim Young, as a head coach, has never lost a bowl game. He's 5-0, and 2-0 and at Army. They won the Cherry Bowl, and then they beat Illinois in the Peach Bowl the year after that in 85. They lead right now, 14-13. Fullback. And he breaks out of one tackle and gets inside the 20 near the 18. Wayne Shaw. David Smith has now set a new Sun Bowl record for passing in this game, 273 yards. Boy, they've all been abandoned the run, haven't they? They really have. And, you know, it's interesting talking to David yesterday, how confident he was. He said he came here as a walk-on, not to sit on the bench, though. He fully expected to play. I was uh, really surprised at all the confidence that David has in himself. Third and one with 4.30 to go, third quarter. That'll cost him five uh, and draw the wrath of Bill Curry. This has been some of their problems inside the 20-yard line this entire year. Darrell Chapman arguing. There's Bill Curry. What a remarkable job Curry has done this year under some really adverse circumstances. They call it a dead gun snap count. They're calling our snap count. They've been doing it all day. I know we asked the and he said he didn't hear a word. I'm surprised though, because he, he did take a course in preaching once at every university. <laughs> He'd argue his case a little too strong. Homiletics. You and you and he both had a course in homiletics, didn't you? He's the only coach I know who's had a course in homiletics. Hot receiver, Greg Payne, touchdown. <laughs> time this afternoon. Very patient drive by the Tide, and that's what you have to do against this Army defense, and great coordination between Smith and Payne there, reading the blitz. Roll Tide. <laughs> Doyle for the extra point with 4.23 to go in the third quarter. And behind the passing of senior quarterback David Smith, and David Smith, this is all in his head. It's a, again, he read the blitz early. Troy Lingley, the inside linebacker, was going. No free safety again. Nice adjustment by Payne running the post. And then he carries the defender into the end zone. Alabama leads for the first time by 6, 20-14. John Dockery back at the Sun Bowl, and as a former defensive back, I can't believe, Pat Hayden, how Ernest Boyd is playing. You see he's nine yards deep, the blitz is on, he's playing outside position. This is a give-me touchdown for David Smith and Payne. Take a look at it right here. See him bounce outside, there's no one to help inside, the ball is softly thrown. That's the second time Boyd has been beaten that way. Just a mistake by a defensive back. He's a senior. He should know better on the blitz. You have to take away the inside. He didn't do it for the second time in a row. You, sound, to you, Pat you sound like a guy who played for the Jets the Super Bowl, John. <laughs> uh, <Huh? yes. laughs> you sound like a guy who wears a world champion's ring. Nicely done. But he doesn't have a road scholarship. Right, Pat? <laughs> Couldn't play, but I could think. <laughs> Mike Mayweather. <laughs> the 31-yard line. <laughs> The follow-up Doc's report, the Army bench was, was talking about it. Every corner, and Doc is right. You can see the defensive coaches there. Every, anytime you get a blitz, the free safety on the blitz, the corner has to play the inside technique and force the offense to throw the ball outside. So Army trailing for the first time. It's a 14-6 Houston lead in the second quarter. 20-14 Alabama here. And McWilliams is stopped. Boy, I'll go back to the conversation that John had with Derek Thomas just before the half when he said, we've got the wishbone puzzle solved. 
they have stopped them the last two drives. And college football is a game of adjustments, and the adjustments they've made here in the second half on defense has been they've gotten off the ball a lot faster and plenty more. They're getting a lot more penetration. That has been the difference. Second down and nine. 20 to 14, 348 to go, third quarter. And here's Barnett loose again. How in the world he will be caught because he's kind of like a tugboat once he gets into the open. He just ran through the tackle of George Bethune. It was unbelievable. Bethune thought he had him dead in his tracks, number 59. There was a big collision, but Barnett was not to be denied. That's his second run over 50. That's for 58. But incredible individual effort. This should have been a one-yard gain at most. You see Bethune just comes off the tackle, and Barnett just turns on whatever speed he has but he it, that is a remarkable play by Barnett a play that should have been made and stopped by George Bethune 158 yards now for Barnett he's one away from his season high and Mayweather dances to the outside on first and goal and picks up a couple two runs in excess of 50 for Barnett and uh, bless him if he had any speed he'd have scored twice you know, Jim Young says that his team is not blessed with great speed, but he plays to his team's strength. That's discipline and intensity, and you can see the intensity in the way Ben Barnett runs. Second down and goal. Army trails by six, 2.53 to go. Third quarter, 20 to 14, Alabama. And that's on the right side. Brian McWilliams, the quarterback, faking to the back. Uh, back of fullback Bark, and then he kept it around the right side. But it's been a nice sequencing of plays here. They run the fullback, and then they try to get the ball to the perimeter so either the quarterback can take it or pitch the ball. Mac Williams looks back over at the bench where the play is being sent in. Third and goal for the six. The Army is very good inside the 20 yard line because they don't have to change their offense when they get inside the 20 yard line. They run the wishbone all over the field. Third and goal from the six. They try Barnett. He does not make it. Stuffed by Steve Webb, number 84. You have to wonder, with the two field goals being blocked by Derek Thomas, whether Jim Young will even try a field goal here. I think he's debating that very point. They have gone for fourth down. They were five for five in the Navy game. It was actually seven for seven. It's a remarkable day for them. And here they're going to go for on fourth down, partly because of that, but also because Derek Thomas has blocked those two field goals. So it's a bowl game. It's Christmas Eve. The 48,000 are on their feet. It's fourth and goal from the four. Mayweather. Touchdown. Boy, he just got in. And Alabama will argue with vehemence. Say, if he did get in, it was incredible individual effort. I thought from here when I saw it, there was a lot of white jerseys keeping him out of the end zone. Great individual effort by Mike Mayweather. Keith Walker with a chance to put Army back on top. Officially call it a touchdown from three yards out. And the cadets have reclaimed the lead. A remarkable call by Jim Young on fourth and goal from the three-yard line. Unusual, but they've done it all year long. But watch the block on the right side by number 19, Calvin Cast, the right halfback. That sets it up. He clears the way in the defensive back. And the line judge is right there to make the call. The line judge is there. And he will leave the ball across the plane of the goal line. One more look as McWilliams, another nicely timed pitch. Nice soft pitch out in front of Mayweather and the block by Cass. And the official was right there. Now the ball has to cross the plane. And the line judge, George Hayward, You'll see him, well, you can't really see, yes, you can see him at the top. Look at him eyeball, eyeball. 
search for it, and then signal. He is right. He's two feet away. I think what the Alabama people were arguing about, though, was whether he was out of bounds when actually the ball crossed the plane. Now there is a dead ball personal foul against Alabama. So they'll kick from the 50, and you have to wonder about a potential onside kick. Bill Curry getting it explained. Well, no surprise, really, that, that Army goes for it on fourth and goal from the three, given the two set of circumstances. I think the real argument is whether Mayweather was out of bounds when the ball cra uh, crossed the plane. See, that's the issue. His right knee and, and body were out of bounds, and I think... Uh, but the, but the line judge right there is right on it. He's got a much clearer view than we do. Army reclaims the lead with 1.22 to go. Third quarter, 21-20 over Alabama. And after the personal foul penalty, the cadets will kick off from midfield. Let's go down to John Dockery. Thank you, Vernon. We're going to talk uh, sports and sponsorship. Uh, three years ago, John Hancock and Bill Boyan were one of the first companies to step forward to sponsor a bowl, and Bill, has it gone well for you? Oh, it's been fantastic. You know, a lot of our employees are enthusiastic about it. Customers, oh, this is Americana. This is Americana. The customers love this kind of thing. Not only this bowl game in Army and Alabama and their tradition, but we do a lot of marathons as well, and they just love this kind of stuff, as I do. What's the best part about this whole sponsorship? Well, I'll tell you, the, the partnership that we have with El Paso and the Sun Bowl Association, guys from CBS like you, it's just been a terrific experience, not only for us, but for all these ball players and all their coaches. Uh, it's, it's a memorable thing. Thank you, Bill. Back to you, Vern. Thank you, John. And if there's any doubt from listening to Bill Boyan, John Hancock is headquartered in Boston. That's a first down. <laughs> Greg Payne makes the catch out at the 32-yard line. Battle and Payne have really been busy. And they've done most of their damage on the outside of the defense, running the outcuts because they're getting plenty of cushion by the Army defensive back. Payne's previous high had been six catches. That was in a win against Kentucky. Now Russell's in motion and Smith is back. Deep left side and overthrows Marco Battle. It'll be second down and ten. And Vern, the, the special holiday greetings I want to give to someone out there. Our stage manager, Lou Cody, and his brother-in-law, Mike Greer, is recuperating from a very serious construction ad, uh, accident in City Hospital in Akron. We want to wish him the best and a happy uh, holiday season. 112 to go from the John Hancock Sun Bowl. Terrific ball game thus far. 9-2 Army against 8-3 Alabama. It's 21-20, Army leads. This time they'll hand it off to Murray Hill, who gets just a couple. And it'll be third down. David Smith, 308 yards today. A remarkable day for David Smith, but really not surprising because he has a very good mind. He works very hard and recognizes where to throw the ball very quickly. You don't need to have a big arm if you know where to throw it quick. Out of the shotgun on third down and nine. Final minute, final 40 seconds, actually, in the third quarter. Stunts by the Army defensive line, and Smith in trouble. He's not terribly agile, but he gets the pass away to Howard Cross for a first down. Howard Cross playing with bruised ribs. And I think that's a, and he's, you can see now it looks like it might be an ankle. Probably the best blocking tight end in all of America. Two week, two years ago, he had a nickname of Iron Hands, and every time he caught the ball in practice, the team stopped and applauded him. But he's worked very, very hard at catching the ball and has had a real nice year at tight end for Alabama. First down and 10, 22 seconds, 20 seconds to go now, third quarter. Blitz coming again. Corner blitz, Smith goes left, intercepted. Picked off by O'Neal Miller, and the chase is on. And he's got speed, no flags, touchdown Army.
37 yards as Miller gets his fifth pick of the season. And Keith Walker is on to try and make it an eight-point lead again. Nailed it. Heard one of the few more decisions by David Smith that we have seen today. as the free safety has done a nice job right there. Watch how he reads the eyes of David Smith and just locks in on him early. You see his head is right there. He sees the crossing route by the tight end, Russell, and steps up right in front of the play. That's great anticipation by Miller. We've seen it to people in the running game, stuffing the run, and also in the, in the pass defense. I'm struck by a conversation that we had with Homer Smith yesterday when he circled... O'Neal Miller's name on his depth chart and said, here's the young man we fear the most. He said, we have to account for him. We need to know where he is every play. And having fallen behind 20 to 14, Jim Young's bunch comes back with two quick touchdowns and David Smith, who has just made his first mistake of the afternoon, gets on the headset to talk with Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator. Bill Curry placidly looks on, 28-20, seven seconds to go, third quarter. This is an Army team that plays what Jim Young calls a rainbow schedule. They try and schedule a number of Ivy League teams, teams in the area around uh, West Point. They try and schedule a number of major games like Washington, uh, Rutgers, Boston College. Boston College. But it's a mixed schedule because they know they don't have the caliber of athlete to compete with the top 20 teams week in and week out. And it's the right kind of schedule for Army. Meanwhile, Bill Curry in the Southeastern Conference faces one of the most brutal schedules, I think, in all of college football. Now we have a dead ball foul called against the cadets for undisciplined celebrations in the end zone. <laughs> they lost their cool after the... Uh, after the touchdown, so they've been penalized back to the 20. I'll still never understand that penalty. You're in college, you score touchdowns, aren't you supposed to have some fun? I thought that was uh, <laughs> the, the point idea. of it all. Nonetheless, that'll give Alabama some very good field position. Pierre Good will uh, wait for it at the 15-yard line. Taken by Good at the 12. And he's down at the 22. Darrell Sure makes the tackle after a 15-yard return. Coming up Monday, John Madden, Pat Summerall will be at the Metrodome in Minnesota as the Los Angeles Rams take on the Minnesota Vikings in the wild card game at 2 o'clock Eastern time. When I saw the Rams last week against the 49ers, nine sacks of 49er quarterbacks. Kevin Green and Gary Jeter did a great job of rushing the passer. That's coming up Monday. Right now, three seconds to go, third quarter. And Smith out of the shotgun. Through a, an interception, last time out. Into the right side, caught by Wayne Shaw. Darrell Scherf misses the tackle. And then Ernest Boyd comes up to, to make the stop, but that might be enough for a first down. That is the end of the third quarter with our score, Army 28, Alabama 20. The Sun Bowl on CBS returns after this message and a word from your local station. Jim Nance as Army, a two-touchdown underdog, as Storm from behind, they had a lead at the half, fell behind 20 to 14, and then two third quarter touchdowns to regain a 28-20 edge. As we begin the fourth quarter, David Smith out of the shotgun on first down and 10 from the 37-yard line. Blitz coming by the cadet. Smith goes left, incomplete for battle. Get a nice play there by O'Neal Miller, the free safety who got in the passing lane, but I'm a little bit of surprise that they continue to blitz David Smith because he is in the shotgun formation. He's obviously five or six steps further away from the onrushing blitz, and because they have the advantage with those receivers in their speed. Second down and ten. David Castile, the deep back in the eye. Fake the draw, Smith the throw. 
Left side caught by Wayne Shaw, number 43. And he spilled at the 44. Troy Lingley makes the tackle, number 45. If you just joined us, we'll bring you up to speed. Derek Thomas has blocked two field goals at seven blocks in his career. But Army just scored 14 unanswered points. The first on a fourth and three, and then an interception return by O'Neill Miller for a touchdown. And it's 28-20, the Cadets third down and four, Alabama. Seven hundred nineteen looking on. That's a rather obvious audible. <laughs> Low snap, bobbled. It'll be fourth down. And the Army bench comes alive. That's the other thing, getting a team ready for a ball game that likes to throw the ball and use the shotgun. And because there's so much more timing involved in that kind of offense than running the wishbone, sometimes when you have those couple of weeks off, it's tough to get yourself ready to play. Now Chris Moore comes on to punt for the fourth time. 13-40 remaining in the ball game. A little pressure applied. Nice punt. What a nice punt. And it just does ooze into the end zone. A 61-yard punt, but it will come out to the 20-yard line. Well, we've got uh, our usual college crew on hand here today, but a rather special man who's calling it a career at CBS at the end of this day. We want to wish our mobile unit supervisor, Bob Hanford, a happy retirement. 37 years at CBS. This is Bob's last show. We wish him luck. You know, we wish. We hope that you and I last. <laughs> if, <laughs> if we last 37, you've got a scoop. Out to the 23. We won't get 37 between us. You're right. Maybe deservedly so. <laughs> <laughs> ah, the judgments for others to make. 13-14 remaining in the ballgame, 28-20. This has been a very, very patient offense by the Army. You don't see a lot of spectacular plays. You've seen a couple of runs by the fullback, but very efficient on first down, gaining four yards virtually every time. Comes the option. Mike Mayweather out to the 30. Let's go down to John Dockery. Thank you, Vern. Uh, Lieutenant General Dave Palmer, Superintendent of the Academy, you were a 14-point underdog coming in. Are you surprised? Not at all. We're the Army. When the Army deploys, wherever we go in the world, we go to win. And you're certainly doing that today. What about the ticket requests? I know this was a hot ticket. Well, we were. Uh, we had to um, uh, answer requests for several thousand. You see, El Paso with Fort Bliss here is an Army town, and so that makes this for us almost a home game. Almost a home game. And tomorrow night on 60 Minutes, there's a piece on the Academy. Okay, Vernon Pat. Okay, John. First down and 10. Wow. And the blitz is coming. There it ball. Oh, it's a forward pass. And then a flag comes out from way up the other side of the field. Keith McCants. Unbelievable blitz there inside by Keith McCants. No flag. Wave off the flag. Here's J.C. Ladderback. We have an incomplete pass. We will pick up the flag. They rule this an incomplete forward pass, and we're going to get a chance to look at that. And the, the question is whether whether it was, in, in fact, a forward pass. But early on, the rhythm was disrupted by McCants, number 86. And then Brian Williams, it was a forward pass. It was a good call by the official. Even though it was underhand, it was like a little shovel pass. So good call. Second down and 10. 28-20, Army leads it. They test the pullback again up the middle. Out to the 35, and that'll be a third down. We saw a great blitz on the plate earlier by Keith McCants, and we've talked a little bit about him today. I think guys like Keith McCants are changing the way college football is played. He is 6'4", 250 pounds, and runs a 4'5", kind of 40. And because of that, offenses are going to have to change their scheme against players like him. There wasn't players with that kind of dimensions four or five years ago in college football. Third down, six, under 12 minutes remaining. Army leading by eight, blitz threatened by Alabama. And they try the fullback. A flag comes uh, from the umpire. Might have a holding call here. Yeah. 
Holding on the offense. Against Army. That's where that call usually is made by the umpire. Jim Young looks on. Be surprised whether they would accept it or not. They could force him with about seven, right? Yeah. He climbed. Fourth down. So that'll bring up fourth down with 11.49 remaining in the ballgame. And the cadets will bring on the punting unit. Bill Curry looks on. You know, watching John with General Palmer, I was, uh, I was fortunate enough to sit at the dinner Thursday night with General Fred Gordon, who's the Commandant of the Marine Corps, and just a wonderful man. We had a chance to chat. I asked about his background. I said, where are you from? And he said, I was born in Anniston, Alabama, but don't publicize it. So I promised him we wouldn't. <laughs> Here's the punt by Rambush. At the 30, Murray Hill, who had an 89-yard punt return wiped out by a clipping penalty back in the third quarter. That's a seven yard return of a 34 yard punt. Alabama has the ball. Arkansas, UCLA, the Mobile Cotton Bowl, January 2nd. Hello, I'm Coach Bill Curry of Alabama. On behalf of the Alabama football team, I'd like to wish you a very Merry Christmas. And our special hope would be that the Spirit of Christ would go with you through each and every day throughout the year. Bill Curry should not be a surprise on this Christmas Eve that the Alabama team was favored. They have two theologians on the staff. Bill spent a year at every university theological school, and Homer Rice is offensive. Homer Smith, rather, has a master's in theology from Harvard University. But they trail right now by eight. Smith to Wembley. Oh, dandy catch. And nicely timed by David Smith. And he throws that corner route, which Wembley uh, ran about as well as anybody we have seen this year. And it's beautifully timed. Leads the ball away from the defender and allow Wembley to run under it. That's a gain of 20. We'll see how it developed. Bottom of the screen. The key here is when you go down is to think inside before you break outside. And you know, watch Prince Wembley as he does that. Get the little move inside, and then the ball well thrown away from the defender. First down, Smith back. Flushed out, under pressure, and throws it up incomplete. Will Huff was right in his face. Pat, I'm wondering, do you, you get the sense that, that this rather impressive passing attack is, is the outgrowth of adjustments in the game, or did they come in thinking they would throw this much? No, they, they believed they could run the football in the first half, but when they didn't have much success, because Army did a nice job of stopping the run, particularly on first down, they made the adjustment and said, hey, we're going to win this game or lose it throwing the football. Second down and 10, 28-20 with 11-10 to go. Army leads it by eight. Draw play. Wayne Shaw, high load as he gets to the 41. It will be third and long. Daryl Sherb makes the tackle, number 22. We're at the Sun Bowl in El Paso, 48,719 on hand on a gorgeous Christmas Eve afternoon. 10.52 remaining in the ballgame. Army jumped out to a 14-3 lead, led at the half by one, fell behind 20-14, and then stormed back with two late third quarter touchdowns. Third and eight, Alabama. Make the draw. Smith back with time. Across the middle, caught. That's a first down Alabama at the 30-yard line. Bernie, you know what Markle Battle does so well is catch the ball with his hands. A lot of guys, particularly when they run over the middle, will try to catch it with their body and jump up and protect themselves from the hit. But Markle Battle does such a nice job of getting his hands out in front of the ball and making the play. Senior from Phoenix City, Alabama, who's having his biggest day of the season. Battle with seven catches for 85, 86 yards now. And a touchdown. Wearing the gloves in this 50-degree weather in El Paso. First and 10, Alabama. Smith, left side again, incomplete. Intended for Greg Payne. Mike Thorson, number 40, was defending on the play. And Smith took, took another shot. And as much pressure and blitzing as Alabama is doing, if they're going to continue to throw the ball, they might as well throw it out of the shotgun. wonder if the snake is watching today. Kenny Stabler. Some of his records may be in jeopardy before it's all over. And Namath. They've had some decent throwers at uh, Alabama. 
Remarkable, never a Heisman Trophy winner, though. Scott Hunter, one of the great quarterbacks, is here today, as a matter of fact, one of the Crimson Tide quarterbacks. Second down. Prince Wembley again. And that might be enough for a first down. And the key to completing passes clearly is the pass protection. That time, David Smith had plenty of time to look over the defense, look from left to right, and Prince Wembley just ran the little hook route. The ball was well thrown right in the numbers again for an easy catch. If you're thinking ahead with 10 minutes left, Alabama trailing by eight may very well go for two. They're only one of four on two-point conversions this year, so they haven't been real successful doing it. Right now, they've got a first down and 10 from the 18. Trailing 28-20, 9.45 to go. Blitz again from the outside. And the pass by Wimbley bobbled. Would have been a terrific catch, and he couldn't quite hang on. Prince Wimbley, one of four freshmen, as we said, for Bill Curry, who have played a lot this year. 165 pounder. They think he has a very, very bright and strong future here at Alabama over the next three years. David Smith, 379 yards thus far. Important down for David Smith right here at second and ten with his tr team trailing by eight, though. And again, Army looks like they might be coming. They are. Max Blitz. They send eight, and Smith finds Barco Battle at the eight. Remember earlier when Ernest Boyd was beaten for two touchdowns because he wasn't taking away the inside? Well, now he's playing so much to the inside, that is why Alabama is throwing the outs. There's plenty of cushion out there for him to throw the ball outside. Here's in Ernest Boyd. He's going to step inside, which leaves plenty of room for the wide receivers from Alabama to run the out route. See, so he takes away the inside. Big cushion, and that's an easy completion to Marco Battle. Let's see if that's enough for the first down. Stretch of the chain. And it is first and goal, Alabama, at the eight-yard line. Tough, I'm sorry, Vern, but this is the toughest part of the field to score for a passing team. Because, again, the zones that you have to defend are so much compressed because you're down there inside the 10. 9-23 remaining in the ball game. 28-20, Army. First and goal from the eight. No blitz this time. Across the middle. Caught at the five. Marco Battle makes the grab at the four-yard line. And that is the ninth catch for Battle. He and Greg Payne, nine apiece. Bill Curry has to be thinking about touchdown, although there's nine minutes, about a little under nine minutes remaining. Because Army's offense has controlled the ball so well, he has to think about getting this one in. So he's going to take, I believe, three downs here to try to get the ball in. Second down and goal from the four. Tenth play of the drive. They toss it to Castile. And he spins to the two-yard line. David Castile did a nice job of fighting through some traffic there. It didn't look like there was anybody, any hole or soft spot for him to find. But he kept stretching it out, cut it back, and then danced around a couple of people. Nice play by Castile. Third and goal from the two. Castile is known primarily as their short yardage runner. Lamont Russell enters the Alabama lineup, third and goal from the two. Castile and Shaw in the eye. Play fake. Smith. The senior from Chesapeake, Virginia. That's a play that David Smith should have gotten rid of the ball. He can't take a sack in that situation. But a great play by Greg Gatz, the outside linebacker. Watch how he fights through some couple of guys at the bottom of the screen there. Fights through two guys. And David Smith probably should have thrown this ball out of the end zone, but Gatson was on him too quickly. He really didn't have a chance to do so. Player down for the cadets at the 17-yard line. 
and Alabama used the play action pass there, Vern, hoping to draw that defensive secondary up quickly and was going to try to dump the ball quickly to Russell, but he didn't fool the defense. Time has been called with 7.30 remaining while the cadets tend to the injured man. 7.25 remaining, and the Alabama Crimson Tide had to settle for the field goal by Philip Doyle after the outstanding defensive effort of Greg Gatson, 28-23, as the cadets try and become the first team in Army history to win their 10th game. Never happened before. There's the kick by Doyle. And into the end zone where Mike Mayweather will take it. And it's about to the city by under the middle Mike Mayweather. Well, good ball game for you today and a special program coming up tomorrow. Winterfest begins tomorrow at 2 o'clock Eastern time. Tim Ryan and Billy Kidd were over in France and we'll have highlights of World Cup skiing from Val d'Isere, France. We'll also have the World Junior Figure Skating Championships, interviews with Dan Jansen and Eddie the Eagle Edwards. That'll follow, be followed by the NBA tomorrow. The Lakers and the Utah Jazz at 3.30 Eastern time tomorrow on CBS. First down and 10, Army, 7.25 to go. McWilliams hit and drops. It's up to the Alabama defense right now to decide whether they're going to win this game or not. Seven minutes and about 15 se uh, seconds remaining. They have been able to solve most of the problems today except the fullback, Ben Barnett. You see Kemp coming in today, average 4.2, but today almost 13 yards a carry. Two runs in excess of 50 yards, one of 25. Blitz. McWilliams pitches. Mayweather does not get the block he needed and is down at the 21. Calvin Cass tried to lay the block. John Mangan fought off and made the tackle. What a nice play by John Mangan. He is a guy that Don Lindsay said this week is, is easy to overlook because he's always in position. He always does what you tell him. Let's look at Mike Mayweather down. John uh, Magnum, he was taken aside this week by Don Lindsay, and Lindsay said to him, hey, I apologize for uh, overlooking you this year because you've had a great year at corner. 53-year-old Jim Young, undefeated as a bowl coach in stints previously at Arizona and Purdue, and now trying to stay unblemished as the head coach at Army. Army holds on to a five-point lead, 642 remaining in the ballgame. They're 0 of 5 on their last third down, so this is a big one now. Third down and nine as the clock resumes. Most important third down for the Alabama defense all day. McWilliams has it batted down. It'll be fourth down, and again, it's Derek Thomas. It's remarkable how you, some guys just seem to make plays, and Derek Thomas does that time and time again. Two block field goals, and then on the most important third down of the defensive day, gets his big paws up. Remember, he's 6'4", beautifully timed, too. The left hand knocks it down. And that brings on the Army punting unit, Rip Rambush. And Murray Hill, who had an 89-yard punt return wiped out by a penalty, waits for it near the 34-yard line. Way up in the air. Hill struggles and gets to the 47, where the Alabama Crimson Tide get possession of the ball with 6.17 remaining. A 42-yard punt, 10 on the return, and we check in with Doc. John? You know, right behind me, Vern, is Mike Mayweather. Uh, they were checking his left knee. A mild sprain is the word. He ran up and down the sidelines behind the bench, appeared to be okay. They're still talking with him. Back to you guys. All right, Doc. First down, 10, Alabama. 28-23, they trail. Ball at the 46-yard line, and Smith will operate from the shotgun. He's thrown for 393 yards today. Left side, incomplete. Almost picked off, flags are down. It is not an interception, there are two flags on the play. The debate is whether Marco Battle, the wide receiver, was held over there. Here's J.C. Louderback. Pass interference on the defense. I think as Marco Battle was rounding the corner trying to come inside, somebody grabbed him and prevented him from coming back and making the catch. 
Houston leads Cleveland 14-9. Third quarter of the AFC Wild Card game. And a reminder, the NFC Wild Card game coming up Monday on CBS. The Rams at Minnesota. First down, 10, Alabama. And here come the Crimson Tide. They came in as 14-point favorites. They trail 28-23, 6-10 to go. The difference in the game right now, a pass inter interception by O'Neal Miller. That's deep and caught at the 25-yard line. Todd Richardson, number 23, a 19-yard game. What an, an athletic play by Richardson because he was very well covered. Good protection for David Smith. Again, the corner route, which he throws so well, but it was a little bit high. But the very athletic play, he's only 5'10", but can really get up, can really jump. One of the best athletes on this team. First down, 10, Alabama at the 25, 5.55 to go in the ball game. Draw play. Murray Hill to the 21. Murray Hill has his great acceleration in the hole, Vern. A lot of running backs will take some time getting to a hole and then getting through it. But once he sees it, that's when he accelerates and he explodes with the tiniest crack. Now substitutions made by both Alabama and by Jim Young's team. 5.25 to go in the ball game, and the Crimson Tide quickly at the line of scrimmage. Second and five, they trail 28-23. Shaw. First and goal at the four. Darrell Sherb and O'Neal Miller. What a nice call by Alabama. Most of their plays today have been slow developing plays by the tailback or passes. That time, a quick hitter inside to the fullback to Wayne Shaw. And watch this offensive line, the big line, 275 pounds. Larry Rose made another nice block, and then Wayne Shaw just read that block and stepped around it. That's a gain of 16 and a first and goal from the four with 4.48 to go in the game. They'll try the fullback again, and he picks up three down to the one. They might mark it down at the two. Alabama trailed 14 to three at one point. It was 14-13 at the half. They went on top 20 to 14, third quarter. The Army scored two unanswered touchdowns, late third quarter. It's 28-23 Army now. But a second and goal, Alabama at the two. to try to make it a three-point game. And Vern, some guys have that knack, that ability to, to run that up and over the top, and David Castile has done that all year long. And what he does so well is wait till he gets close to the line of scrimmage before he jumps. That's the seventh touchdown for Castile this year, and Bill Curry's bunch has a lead for only the second time in the ball game. And they're going for two points to try to make it a three-point game. 29-28 right now. And they will operate from the eye formation. are down as well. It was Ernest Boyd who batted the pass down. Told you Alabama has had a tough time in two-point plays this year. One of four coming in today's game. Bill Curry, you saw, thought the pass interference would be the call. Defensive holding. Instead of pass interference, defensive holding. It looked like Ernest Boyd grabbed his jersey right here as the receiver comes inside. Yeah, he grabbed number six, Greg Payne, there, and the uh, back judge was right there to make the play. And as a result, they'll get another shot at the two-point conversion. 4-0-1 to go in the ballgame. 
And the ball at the one and a half. One of four in 1988. Castillo knocked down. So it will remain a one-point edge for the Crimson Tide of Alabama. And still, Pat, a lot of time left for the cadets of Army with four minutes to go. And three timeouts remaining. They don't have to abandon their wishbone offense. They still can be very, very patient, run the same plays they've run all game long. Josh Haynes was the man who made the last tackle. The Crimson Tide lead, but it's a shaky one. One point with 4.01 remaining. Watch tailback David Castile here as he leaps over. Now, a lot of tailbacks will leap too early, jump too early, but he did a nice job of getting almost to the line of scrimmage before he leaps. In an earlier game this year, he did that four times for touchdowns. And as Castile went in for the score, the Crimson Tide bunch on the sideline celebrated, and Phil Curry calmly said, go for two. He's not saying hook him horn. <laughs> and there is Britt Rambush. He's had two field goals blocked today, yet may be called on. Well, he's the punter. Keith Walker, of course, had the field goals blocked. That's right. Walker's going to be the guy who's going to have to either win or lose this game, perhaps, for Army. Walker is the man who has had two field goals blocked. And here is Philip Doyle. Mayweather. Gimpy ankle and all will down into the end zone. And the ball comes out to the 20-yard line. With 4-0-1 remaining, Army doesn't have to do anything differently. They don't have to abandon the wishbone offense. They don't have to try to get it all back in one play and throw the football. They've got plenty of time to continue to run the fullback, run the option play, because they still have three timeouts remaining as well. It's been the fullback for Army today, Ben Barnett, 166 yards on 13 carries. And I'm sure the Crimson Tide are aware of his presence. First and 10 at the 20. 29-28, Alabama. They'll try the fullback, and here he goes. So the, maybe they aren't aware of his presence yet. A career high for Barnett. Nice block by the center, Bruner. Did a nice job of controlling the nose tackle and gave Barnett a couple of different ways to go. Army still to complete its first pass in the ball game, but they do have time with 3.48 to go. And Williams cuts it up to the 40-yard line. It'll be second down and two. Lee Osmond makes the tackle. Again, with those three timeouts remaining, they've got to get themselves really about to the maybe 25 or 30-yard line to give Keith Walker a chance to attempt a winning field goal. Second and two. 29-28 Alabama leads. McWilliams. Calvin Cass. And that's a first down. He stops the clock as Kermit Kendrick makes the tackle. And the clock shows 3-10 remaining. What a nice play by Kermit Kendrick, the corner there, who fought off the block at Cass and made the play. 29-28 Alabama, 3-10 to go, first and 10 Army. And I'm thinking of the thousands of military personnel around the world who are watching today, and among them, 92-year-old Colonel Earl Red Blake. The former great coach, here's McWilliams, who is caught and dropped, and Colonel Blake just looked at that, I'm sure with a shrug. Why, oh why, he is in retirement at uh, Colorado Springs, Colorado. 2.50 to go in the ball game. George Bethune made the play. It'll be second down and 13. The Alabama defense has this Army offense right where they want him now, second and long for the first time today. First time it's been negative yardage on second down. And it'll be third down and negative yardage. Willie Shepard, number 96, makes the tackle. Nice play by Shepard on the inside linebacker position, read the guard, saw the little hole there, and then stepped up to make the play. It's a real good job of reading it. Shepard is right in here, one of the linebackers, and he's going to step inside and make the play. Actually, it was a little bit of a blitz. He got the Williams board a chance to get going. Third and 16. McWilliams tipped, intercepted. 
Charles Gardner. I think the ball may have been tipped by George Bethune. And freshman free safety Charles Gardner makes a heads-up play. And this Alabama team has done a nice job of doing little things today to help them win. Blocking kicks, blocking passes, getting their arms up. That caused the interception there. And a dandy time for Charles Gardner to get his first interception of the season. And the key here is the defensive lineman getting those arms up. When a quarterback is that close to the line of scrimmage, he's going to get some balls tipped. It was actually Osmond, number 42, who made the tip. And then Gardner makes a nice, uh, nice play. Isn't that one of those subtle things defensively about getting your hands up? Absolutely. Little things like that that help you win ball games. David Smith's uh, ball fake is another one of those things that helps Alabama win. Now the Crimson Tide will try and uh, work on the clock as well as advance the ball with the ball at the 30-yard line. 153 remaining. Castile to the 25-yard line. And Jim Young says timeout. Oh, well, we have timeout. Let's take a look at another fine school, the United States Military Academy at West Point. 412 yards for David Smith in the ball game, second down and four, Alabama. And they will keep it on the ground. And timeout has been called by the cadets. That's their second. They have one remaining. David Smith wants a walk on. 412 yards today. The school record 484 held by Scott Hunter. This is David Smith's final game. And it's special, as he told Pat Hayden and me. I'm excited uh, about going on into the into the real world, you know, getting a job. But um, I'm kind of sad because it's, it's possibly my, my last game here at Alabama. And, uh, I won't be around the fans anymore, and I won't be around the players anymore, and it's, it's kind of sad in that way. It's kind of a special moment coming into a game as a quarterback, knowing it's your last game, Vern, because it's a game that you grew up playing when you're three or four in the streets of your hometown, and it meant so much for him to come to a place like Alabama and, and play here. And I think in his reflection on this game, this is a very, very special moment for him and a very happy Christmas if he wins the game. And what a wonderful way to go out. With 412 yards, he's got a Sun Bowl record, 52 passes thrown already today. And uh, as the leader and quarterback of this Alabama team has let their come from behind victory because they had to go to the pass to come from behind and take the lead. And a marvelous job of showing very good poise. Third and one. Army can stop the clock one more time. And Wayne Shaw gets the first down. That'll stop the clock automatically while they change the uh, down marker. But then Jim Young's team does take its final timeout. One thirty-three remaining in the ballgame. No timeout was called. I saw the players uh, from Army signal timeout, but the clock's still running. 29-28, first and 10, Alabama. They came in as 14-point favorites and really had a battle this afternoon. Castile at the 20-yard line. Hey, Vern, you think about the job that Bill Curry did this year. Remarkable team of, uh, year, I think. A team he could have lost after a couple of early losses, but he did. Fought through some adversity, hung on to this team, and they've had a great year. 105 remaining in the ballgame. And David Smith comes over to the near side. 65 seconds remaining. Alabama leads it 29-28. Final 65 seconds from the Sun Bowl in El Paso, Texas. Alabama with a late fourth quarter touchdown. Four minutes remaining in the game. Has a one-point edge, 29-28. And the Crimson Tide have a second down and 12. Army now out of timeouts. 
And apparently both these teams are going to wind up 9-3 and three for the year. Second down, Shaw brought down to the 16. As Jim Young peers at the clock, he can't stop it anymore. Well, Patrick, I know you've done six of these Sun Bowls. This is my first, and uh, I had heard about the hospitality here all these years. It's terrific. They are sensational people here. I don't think there's a bowl that makes their people feel more welcome. Well, there are any number of people that uh, are in charge, but we want to thank Sam Jenkins and Ted Houghton, Jimmy Rogers, and John Fulmer particularly for uh, not only their hospitality and all the folks at John Hancock for uh, helping us out with, uh, with the broadcast. Final 25 seconds. And for bringing together these two outstanding teams, Alabama and Army. And a flag is down. A lot of people thought this wasn't going to be a competitive game, but I just thought with the kind of discipline that Army has displayed all year long, there was going to be a, a pretty close ball game. I was surprised they jumped out to that early lead, but give Alabama some credit for coming back when they had to and showing some poise to win. Of course, the Sun Bowl today, we've got uh, the Cotton Bowl, UCLA and Arkansas, a week from Monday in Dallas. Pat and I will be there for that one. It's going to be a dandy. And for the seniors... At West Point and Alabama, the final game of their careers. As the clock cannot stop, and Bill Curry, somewhat beleaguered in his second season at Alabama, sees his team fight back and win. And Chris Moore, one of the all-time great putters, is lifted on the shoulders. David Smith with 412 yards today. Jim Young's team falls in a bowl game for the first time but did themselves proud today. Our final score, Alabama 29, Army 28. Join us tomorrow for a special Christmas edition of Sports Sunday, Winterfest at 2 o'clock, followed by NBA action when the Los Angeles Lakers meet the Utah Jazz at 3.30. Pat Hayden, John Dockery, Jim Nance, this is Vern Lundquist. Happy holidays, everybody. The John Hancock Sun Bowl has been a present.